So, as I mentioned last week, we're working our way through Mark's Gospel this year, and this passage follows immediately on from last week's uh, Gospel reading, and next week again follows immediately on from this week's. And it's important to remember we're still in only in chapter 1 of Mark's Gospel. And this is a, a, a indicative of, of the nature of Mark's Gospel, this sense of urgency. We've, in, in chapter 1, we've had Jesus baptized, he's been sent out into the wilderness, he's gathered his disciples, and he's already teaching in the synagogue, um, casting out demons and amazing people. Mark's not beating around the bush. We're, we're in chapter 1, and he's already got to the point of the adult life of Jesus' ministry and the reason he is here. I just want to backtrack for a moment or share with you one of my favorite quotes. So many of you here, I imagine, are familiar with C.S. Lewis and uh, a number of his writings. C.S. Lewis is a, a, um, a Christian author and came to his faith quite, quite late in life. And there's an, um, he's got a, an amazing array of, of books uh, on the Christian faith. But one of them is called The Screwtape Letters. And I've shared this with many of you a while before. And it's a, it's a bit of a satirical tape, a take on, um, on faith and evil. Um, and it's about uh, a senior demon educating a junior demon on how to win over people, how to lead people astray. And, uh, and it's a series of, of letters written from the senior uh, demon to the junior. And it, it's a, it is a good read, and it gives you an insight into how easy it is for us to slip into uh, or slip away from the path of, of God. And this is a quote from it. It's one of my favorite quotes. And C.S. Lewis writes, and I think this is from Screwtape, The safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. The safest road to hell. It's almost like that old analogy of how you, what's it about the, how you cook a frog or something, you know, you slowly turn up the water temperature so it doesn't notice. So I'll come back to that in a little bit. So when we look at the readings, uh, the Old Testament reading supports the, new, the, the gospel reading today in that we have Moses, who was regarded as the, one of the, if not the senior prophets in the Jewish uh, tradition, the, the giver of the law, saying that God will send another prophet just like him, and this prophet will speak with authority. And this is uh, a prelude, it's pointing towards the gospel, where we have today Jesus in the synagogue preaching and people going, this man, this, this, this man preaches with amazing authority. Who is he? So the Old Testament is supporting the gospel reading that Mark is getting to the point so quickly. And so when we look at the gospel reading, we find that Jesus has been invited to preach, uh, to speak, in the synagogue. And that was a common practice from my understanding. He was a rabbi, and uh, they would have invited him to come and, come and speak. And we know there are other times he was invited, and he said some things that maybe left them a little bit more disgruntled. But in today's uh, uh, the passage, according to Mark's version, they are amazed at the authority that he speaks with. They are deeply impressed. And one of the, the reasons they give this is that he preaches with authority, not like the scribes. And that's because the scribes often uh, the other, it would kind of say, oh, so-and-so says this. When you read this, so-and-so so -and -so says interpret it this way. Whereas Jesus is speaking with authority. As Lauren uh, um, discussed with the children, Jesus wasn't just a rabbi, wasn't just a wise person, wasn't just a teacher. Jesus was God. Jesus was speaking with authority, saying, this is how you live your life. Not so-and-so says, interpret this passage this way, and this person says, interpret that passage that way. 
Jesus is speaking, is cutting through that and speaking directly to the people. This is how you are to live. He speaks with authority and the people were amazed. But then he goes a step further. He doesn't just speak the words of authority. He then puts that authority into action because the second half of the gospel reading is that of the unclean spirit. And Jesus commands the unclean spirit to come out. And he shows the authority that he has is not just in words, but in action as well. Now, for many people sitting here, sitting at home, 21st century, educated, uh, uh, post-modern world, uh, to some degree post-Christian world, uh, enlightened, when we read of uh, demons and spirits in the Bible, I can well understand many people kind of having a little bit of a slight grin going, oh, you know, those people in the first century, they didn't know all the medical stuff we know. They didn't know the science that we know. Yes, that, will, that would have been a mental health issue. That would have been a disease. That would have been uh, uh, some other issue. <laughs> Next we'll have an aeroplane come over. Um, but, uh, um, you know, they, they, I can, you can well imagine saying, well, these people didn't get it. And so anything that was wrong, it was an evil spirit, was a demon. And to some degree, you're right. You would be right. There are many things that we understand differently now in the sense of, of the development of science and med medicine and the understanding of the human body. However, you could well imagine that people in the first century could look at us and go, you don't get it either. You don't get that we are both physical and spiritual when we look across society. So I'm not really wanting to delve too much into the, the, the spiritual aspect of, of that encounter or the demonic aspect of that encounter. But what I'm wanting to tap into is that passage that I shared with you about the safest road to hell because that's a road in front of everybody not just others it's in front it's a road that is presented to each and every one of us it's a gentle road uh, with a gentle slope with no hard turns no milestones no signposts we all have inner demons we all have um, uh, uh, the 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 ability to uh, be full of pride and anger and hate and unforgiveness. We all have that ability within us. That road is before all of us. And if you want to look even outside of individually, what about in society? We know that there is many evils in society. There's war, there's a, a, a terrorism, there's torture, there's Decisions that are made for selfish reasons at a, at a, at a high level uh, that impact millions of people below. This is a form of evil. This is not of God. So whether it's an individual, and we all uh, uh, are faced with these decisions, and this rose in front of us, or as a society, as a culture, evil exists in the world today. It is Jesus who speaks with authority. And so that question that the people pose back then, 2,000 years ago, who is this man that he speaks with such authority and he can even have has control over uh, the demons? Who is he? That same question applies to you and me here. Who is Jesus in my life today? Not just Sundays, not just Sunday mornings, but every waking moment of my life, who is this Jesus? Because the Jesus that spoke with authority back then is the same Jesus living in our hearts, living uh, in us, speaking with authority. But we need to listen. We need to open our ears, open our hearts. So whilst the road to hell uh, is, is gentle without milestones, without signposts, we have a signpost. His name is Jesus. His teachings, the example that he lived, 
the example of the early church who followed his ways are our examples. If you find yourself going down a path that you think Jesus would not be going down this path, that's not the right path to be on. We have a signpost. We have the Gospels that tell us of the life of Jesus. We have the New Testament sharing, sharing with us the, the life of the early church. And we have the Old Testament as a prelude pointing towards the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So we have a signpost. But we need to read. We need to engage. We need to listen. We need to open our ears and open our hearts to allow Jesus to speak to us, to keep us on the right path, the narrow path. So I just want to share that passage, that quote with you one more time. The safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turning, without milestones, without soundposts. As a Christian family, we do not need to be afraid of evil because God conquers all and the authority of God that God has is over evil as well. Evil within our own hearts too, if we allow God to have authority here as well. So we do not need to be afraid. What we need to do is listen to Jesus, to follow his teachings, to read our Bible, and to live for God and for each other. I'll finish with the passage from John 14 verse 1 where Jesus says to his disciples do not let your hearts be troubled believe in God believe also in me amen, amen.